Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Got a lot to share today uh, about mastery, about structure around oscillation, uh, really, really getting this, you know, one of my desires is to, to have a group, uh, have a bunch of people who understand how to predictably create what they love. You know, it seems like such a, uh, a small ask, but maybe it's big. But anyway, I'm excited to have that. So guys, I, I'm really grateful that you're here. I'm really grateful that you're learning this work. It's very important work. It's very important that you get it. It's very important that you shift out into a, a new orientation, a new way of being. And so let's get straight into it, hey? Let's get straight into it. Let me get, make sure I, you guys can see me good. Okay, so one of the, the biggest challenges that is, is constant is this idea that our current reality is not enough. And we, we simply knock ourselves out of creation and out of having what we love through this really uh, misguided and honestly misled assumption that we must think that a future has to be better than now. And it, it's almost like an unwritten rule in society that uh, the, we must think of the future being better than now. We're going we're gonna to create something better. And, you know, if you, I'm from New Zealand and, and New Zealand was founded, uh, people searching, you know, the, the Maori, the indigenous population, they went to New Zealand, searched for something better. Um, European, Caucasian people went to New Zealand, searched for something better. I know that the United States was based on the premise of, you know, let's, let's go create something better true now what's uh, there's nothing wrong with that hey and we'll go yeah yeah we want to create better we want to have a better future but, but there's something there that's unsaid or invisible and i talked about this earlier today what's the invisible uh instruction when the future's always got to be better see the invisible instruction is heard by aspects of you the invisible instruction if the future always has to be better then what does that make the now Hmm? It makes the now not enough. It makes the now not enough. So it's an invisible instruction. And so even though you don't think you're doing it, oh, Chris, I would never set a goal based on negative. I'd never have a negative vision. Well, unfortunately, there's, uh, there's two sides. So, well, my future will be better. You might go, well, Chris, what's the, what's the problem with that? Well, if you ever design a goal with the idea that it will be better than the now, you simply will not have it for very long. You simply will not have it for very long. And, and here's why, okay? You create a reality in the now, you create an identity, and you say the future will be better. Be better. So that means that the now is not as good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strive to the future, strive to the future. That was weird. I just went completely strong. So it would be better in the future. So you condition yourself to say, when I have this money, love, abundance, whatever it is, that will mean that life is better. Okay, that's my goal. So you go for it. As you're going for it, you're teaching your body that what's safe is that now is not enough. Now is not good enough. In fact, your parents taught it to you. In fact, if you're from the United States, New Zealand, most countries, the whole society is built on we're searching for something better. So it's like inherent in us. Okay, anyway. So then you get to the thing that's supposed to make life better. Okay, so you get it. And it's in direct conflict with who you've been, who your parents have been, who your culture's been, who your society's been. And so therefore, in order for you to accept those things that would be better, you have to Forget who you are, let go of that identity, let go of that way of being, and you have to let go of everything. Or you simply go, no, this isn't enough, and you go for something bigger. Let me ask you, how many of you know somebody who is never satisfied? 
They started off with nothing. They thought if they had a million, they'd be satisfied. Two million, five, 10, 100, 200, a billion. Never satisfied, still living the same them. Or how about others who go for it, but are never allowed to have it because it's directly conflicting with who they are. So they go for it and then somehow they lose it and they don't know why they lose it. It might be they get ill health, their kid distracts them, they get an addiction, they get a bad business partnership or bad marriage, they get, uh, you know, they make a bad decision, you know, for five years, they made great decisions and everything was great. But then as soon as they got it, well, then suddenly they got distracted, took on different projects, they uh, found a way to lose it. And when they lose it, a part of them is weirdly happy again because now they know who they are chasing the goal again see the structure is the problem what happens a lot of times is we think it's us okay we're we're in these things and who's heard this before unless you heard it earlier today was what's the what's the common denominator Okay. A lot of people say, well, Chris, I've had relationships my whole life and I always end up in breakup. What's the common denominator? You see? And they say, oh, it's me. And so they get this assumption that the common denominator is themselves. They say, I have been in, I've tried five different businesses and they've all failed. I've tried 10 relationships, they've all failed. All of my kids have problems. I always try different diets and they never, ever work. Who's heard this before? Well, it has to be me. What's the common denominator in all of these things? Who's heard this before, by the way? Give me a yes if you have. What's the common element in all of these? They say with such certainty. Well, I better fix myself is what they're saying. And they think they're right when they say that. They think they're right. They think, yeah, yeah, I'm right. You know, what's the common denominator? It's me. Yeah. They think they're right, but there's an invisibleness to it. Depends what you're looking at. If you look at one person and their continual failure, you'll say, well, there's a common denominator. But what if you take a thousand marriages? you'll see that over half of them end up in divorce. And I'm sure out of the ones that stick, half of them are unhappy. Well, what's the common denominator? Well, 96% of businesses fail. So what's the common denominator? All, all countries in the developed world are pretty much bankrupt. Well, what's the common denominator? Most people who start a diet aren't successful. So what's the common denominator then? I'm gonna to try to change my video here. I think my camera's got some lag. Oh, that's better. Look at that. Yes. Oh, I just feel like the whole energy changed. The common denominator, the common denominator is structure. Structure. Every single person is in a structure that says the future will be better and the now is not good enough. They're in a structure that they think it's personal. I got to fix myself to have that. Everyone's in the same structure. That is the common denominator. Every single person is in a problem oriented structure. I got to fix the now to get something better. And it gets reinforced gets reinforced by society. Oh, you're not good enough at math. Start learning more math. You, you, you got to do more of this. You got to change that. Then it gets reinforced when you go into self-development. You got to fix all these beliefs. How about healing? You see, it's the same structure. And this is the structure 
The now is not good enough. Something's better in the future. Guys, if we just realized that for the last 400 years, every generation says, oh, we're going to make things that make, the, that make life better. You know, if we showed the things that we can have for free to our grandparents, great grandparents, probably great, great grandparents, what we can have for free or for very cheap, they couldn't, that, that was their wildest imagination. But here we are still hoping for abundance, <laughs> still hope. You see what I'm saying? Still going for it. Like it's still not enough. Can you, can you feel the, 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 the unwinnable nature of that structure? You either number one, can't have, can't keep it because it violates your identity or two, you'll just keep on chasing the next thing because you, you just can't accept that the now is good enough. See the structure determines the outcome. If you pour water, it, down a hill, it can only go down. The structure of, of gravity and, and a hill sloping like this and water, the water won't flow up. The, the doesn't matter how motivated that water is. It doesn't matter how much work the water does on itself. It doesn't matter how much organic produce and how much meditating that freaking water does, it is going to flow down the path of least resistance. If you put two, two sides to water, if you have the structure of the riverbanks, the water is only going to flow in one way. It might break the riverbanks every so often, but most of the water is going to flow one way. Does that make sense? If you're in a rocking chair, if that's your structure, you're sitting on a rocking chair. It doesn't matter how much self-work you do. If you're in a swing or a pendulum, it doesn't matter how much you push forward, you just go back and forward and back and forward and back. See, if you're in that structure, it's never going to move forward, you see? And same with the structure that the now is not as good as a future moment. That structure will never, ever, ever resolve itself. Right on, Jay. Does that make sense? It cannot resolve itself. You spend 30 years learning to be somebody that is fixing themselves, or even worse, generations of patterns saying the now is not good enough. If you're in that structure, you'll never get to a place where you can have it. It will either never be enough, you have to keep on going, or you have to break it to make sure that you become who you are, which is typically what I see in life right now is typically everyone's, their identity is chasing chasing right i think other other coaches will say that you know you're you're a human doing no one's a human being yeah cam's cameron's question so you're saying we're not living a, a real purpose yeah i'm saying every single one of us uh are typically only creating outcomes that are designed to resolve ways we feel incomplete We're designing ways to, to resolve a way we feel incomplete instead of accepting we can have it all now. And, you, you know, you could challenge me, hey, if you want, you can challenge me. What is something you can't have now? People say, Chris, you don't know. You, you know, I can't have health now. And I'm like, really? There's not a single part of your body that's not healthy right now? See, everyone's in dis-ease and in ease. There's always parts of us that are healthy and parts of us that are not healthy, you see? It's just where you're focused. In fact, the body is fantastic at healing and looking after itself. But are you focused on the 98% of you that's freaking amazing, a miracle, healthy, a walking machine that has liquid and blood and oxygen and thought like, are you focusing on all them or are you focusing on the one thing that's out? So you can't tell me you can't find things out. Oh, Chris. Yeah. Okay. Good point. But, but financial abundance, man, my bank, you have not seen my bank account. I'm screwed. So you can't find abundance right now. And the fact that in most, for most of us, we, we've got running water, access to internet. Uh, you know, the, the worst place you've got to go down and ask for food from someone else will give you food. Like there is abundance. So you didn't have to make the food, cook the food. You didn't have to grow it. You know, really you can't find abundance in the moment. You can't find abundance in a flushing toilet or the internet. You know, you can't find the abundance and sitting at the beach for free and just loving the, the freedom. Do you see what I'm saying? You can't find abundance. You won't find, if you can't find abundance now, you'll never find it. 
You see, it's this searching of this from the outside. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I could find abundance, Chris, but you can't find love. I'm single, right? I can't find love, Chris. I'm single. You don't get it. I, I've got no relation. What do you mean? Yeah, that will stump him, right? Can't find, of course, love is a verb. Love is about giving. By giving, you get it. You see, I know people in relationships that are in marriages that don't have any love at all. It's not the relationship. It's through giving it. Someone says, well, how does this apply to weight loss? I definitely think life will be better. Well, it won't. <laughs> it, it simply won't. Your life will be exactly as it is now, you see. And so, so weight loss, right, isn't, isn't an end result, right? And, I, and I, I love you. And I appreciate anyone that says, hey, I'm going, what about this thing? I love the challenge. So the truth is, is you right now can feel absolutely sexy and energized and feel love and feel like you love your body right now. There are many things you can love your body. You can feel energized, sexy, everything you want to feel without the need for that. And then you can still go and have it, but it will be equal. Does that make sense? I don't want, does that make sense? Give me a yes if you get that. You the same. Do you see? You can have it now because it's not the weight loss that you want. It's not the weight loss that you want. It's the feeling of how your body would feel, you see. I'm not going to read out your name, but uh, but but type in if, you, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not that. Thanks for typing in. I appreciate it. It's not that, you know. It's just not. It's not that. It's not. <laughs> it's just not. It's like you really, you know, there's, there's nothing you can't have right now if you truly understand your end result truly understand your end result. It's not the money. You can have money in the bank account and feel broke. You know, you can have no money in the bank account and feel abundant, you know. Um, Kerry says, yeah. So that's a really tough situation, hey? Am I allowed to read it out? I see that came into me privately. There's, there's lots of tough situations. And so, there's that's a really okay cool so the question is what about a young mother whose baby has been taken away from her because her mother lies to family services and she's fighting to get him back and so i'd ask her, well, what is the end result right is to feel feel love feel like a, a good mother well all of that's available to feel you know and you've only got to look at people who have been put into prisoners of war who found freedom to be able to overcome the moment so i would say that's a very freaking challenging situation but you don't, that person doesn't have to arrive in a victim mentality saying, oh, because of all this, I can't feel good. I can't feel happy. You see, it's nearly, it's nearly like uh, it, they feel that they're a victim. They can't still feel happy, even though they're going for something. You see, when you, when you realize you can have it all now, in spite of that, I would suggest to that person, I would say, hey, look, right now you get to do some emotional weightlifting because that's a big weight to lift. So if you can feel happy and joy and love right now, if you can come to that conclusion inside of yourself in the midst of one of the worst things happening to, if you can find that, you're going to be free for the rest of your life. You see? Because even though that situation is terrible and you cannot change that that's happening, what can you change the way that you feel? Type in ES if you get this. Type in ES if you get this. That's a terrible situation. Someone always types something and they say, Chris, but what about if you've been throwing off an airplane? right? You've been throwing off an airplane and you've got no parachute, you know? So we can always find exceptions to a premise. And so what I want to use is this is a working premise. It's something that works most of the time. But heck, if someone's running at you, you know, with a shotgun, it's not the time to, you know, it's the time to just react, go into your human instincts and do what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? And so this is a working premise, okay? A working premise, a working model to find the now. True. Nice. Yeah, right on, David. It's very true. So, so here's the point. Is the point that I've got here for you today is structure creates. You can be whoever you choose to be. The structure that you put yourself in is simply that the now 
equals the future. That is the structure. Now, what do I mean by this? Is now you can feel abundant, you can feel fun, you can feel grateful, you can feel love, and you can have whatever you have, whatever materials or situations, circumstances you can have. And in the future, you can feel exactly the same. What you must not do is set this up with asymmetry. Asymmetry says, now I feel frustrated and if I had money, I'd feel free. So I'm going to condition myself to be a frustrated person in the idea that if I have this, then I'll get it. You see? And I'm not telling you how you need to feel. You can go, I'm frustrated now and I'll be frustrated with the, the success that I want. Does that make sense? All that I'm specifically saying is that the new structure you must get into is that the future feeling, the future you is equal to the now. Tabitha's got a good question. Is it as simple as changing focus from what I don't have to what I do have and being grateful? It might be for you. It might be that simple. Typically, it's the understanding that the future is not better than the now. The future is not worse than the now. And so you know you've truly entered the magnetic moment, walked through the wizard's gate. When you can experience in the future things you really were looking forward to experiencing and things you really didn't want to experience, and you are able to stay in the same feeling. You're able to arrive at your greatest successes and your greatest failures as the same person. Now, someone said, Chris, but is this 100% of the time? I would say probably for me, 90-10. 90% of the time, success, failure, I'm Chris. Does that make sense? I'm the same. I feel the same. Does that make sense? Is it's just it's just who I am. I went big. I go, yes, that was awesome. And then I'm Chris again. Does that make sense? I fail. I lose money. Ah, and then I'm me again. You see, because the outside doesn't have the impact on the now, the person, the who I am. The setup that creates oscillation is that the future is infinitely better than the now. And I can't wait to get there. That creates forward and back and forward and back and forward and back and forward and back. You're never allowed to have it. So where does all the work take place on having it now? There is no work for on the future. It's having it now. It's being in the same alignment as you would. So why do we do the process? What is it that you're creating? How would that feel? What are we creating? How does that feel? What are you like now? How's that different? If it's different, we need these to be the same. Does this make sense? Give me a yes if you're getting it. It needs to be the same, right? We go to the future. Well, what happens if you completely fail? It needs to be the same. It needs to be the same. You need to find it now. The magnetic moment overcoming your circumstances and conditioning, getting into the now, letting go is, a, is, is, the, is the process. It is the work. How are we doing? What's landing, guys? Is this good stuff? Sharon says, is this neutrality? I don't agree with neutrality. I agree that people stay the same, which could be called as neutral. But I'm a really intense guy. Like, I don't love the book um, Power of Now by Eckhart, by Eckhart Tolle. I've read it. It was enjoyable. But that's not me. I'm not going to sit and uh, look at the space between music. And it, that's not me. I'm not judging it. I'm just saying that's not me. Is that fair? That's not who I am. So, so for me, what I am is, uh, is I am, I'm me and I'm going to be intense, uh, excited, obsessed, action orientated, no matter what the future holds. Does that make sense? So for you, Sharon, it might be neutrality, okay? So I'm not trying to prescribe a way you must be. We're all individuals. We've all got our own self-expression. 
What I am suggesting as a working premise is that most of the time your now and your future need to line up. And if you want to get into that magnetic moment, this is when there is no resistance. You see, there is no resistance or you're neutral when you have no resistance. So no resistance. We all know that we always take the path of least resistance. So how do you ensure there's no resistance? Well, there's no resistance if you're simply 100% happy with any outcome. So for example, if you're wanting to become a great public speaker, if, if you feel the exact same you feel for a whole crowd booing you and having a whole crowd cheering you, you feel the same? You've, you're not taking it personally anymore and you just get to go be yourself, you see? And so therefore there's, not, no person, there's nothing personal about it. You know it doesn't change you. You know it doesn't make you better or worse or indifferent. So you're just able to go and do it. Now, just compare that to how most people orientate to the world is, is they need to simply do something. They need to do something to then fulfill themselves, to validate who they are, you see? If I do this, if I do enough work, if I help enough people, then I'll be a superior human. No, you'll just be you, you know? And, and you're good enough and you're great and you're perfect, you know? that There was no mistake, you know? You're perfect, but we've, we've been misled and misguided, especially in the Western world, we misled and misguided to have this setup where the future reality is apparently going to be infinitely more better. And we should all think about goals and these things. And the now, uh, the now isn't as good as that. And this locks us in. You see, we can only get so close before our identity goes, this isn't what it's, this isn't me. And then you come back, you know, and then if you do get close to it, ah, oh, this is scary. Here's what other some achievers do. Screw it. I'll just make the goal bigger. But they, they, you know, I'll just make the goal bigger. They never actually get there. Oh, well, I'll just make it bigger. Right on, Jay. How's this landing? How's this landing? Got it, got it. Oh, what's that question popped in? Uh, who's Galaxy J3 Prime? <laughs> what's the technical difference in structure of MM and recoding the resistance? Not sure, not sure um, that they're, I mean, they are together, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, recoding the resistance is inside magnetic mind. Cool. So my simple outcome and goal for you is to, to understand the new structure, the new reality. Okay. And this new structure, new reality is, is going to be different. However, if there is no resistance, if there's no idea that or ideal that uh, a future will change you. Okay. If there's no idea or ideal that a future will change you because you already are it, then it is not in conflict with your identity because you already are it. And if the future is not in conflict with your identity and there is no resistance, then you simply can just have it. You simply can just have it. It's not going for something. You can just simply have it. You are it. You be it before you see it. You are the seed of the tree. You follow everything and you simply already arrive before it arrives. You know it's happening because you are it. And even if it doesn't happen, you have already arrived. You simply are the water at one end of the stream flowing to the other end. You're already it, just experiencing time to move to allow you to manifest in the reality. You create in the, in the ether, you create in the invisible first, and then you simply understand that you plant a seed today, you don't get a tree tomorrow, but you already are the forest and you allow it. And that's the key, hey, that's the key. Unlocks the door, the wizard's gate. And you step through and everything changes. Everything changes. Different. 
new reality. Very new reality. You don't take things personally. Nothing can change the way that you feel. Nothing makes you better or worse. You're just you. You're a powerful creator. You're not racing to get healings. You're powerful. You're in charge. And you can simply have it. And, and just imagine it's like... Um, it's like sitting down to a, a, a table at a restaurant and you're hungry and you got so many different ways to satisfy the tension to become, you know, not hungry, but there's nothing wrong with being hungry. You're still alive. You're still happy. You've actually still got enough calories and, you know, you sit down to order and, and you have a conversation and the conversation is great. You love it. Everything's going great. And you kind of forget to order. You're enjoying the moment so much. You forget to order. And then when you do your order and you open the book, it's one of those heavy, huge, you know, it's like a, a Greek with Italian restaurant that's got, uh, you know, it's just such a huge menu. You look at this menu, there's everything on there you could imagine. All of it's going to satisfy your hunger, even just the bread. And you go, oh, oh, I choose this. But you know, you could choose the steak or the fish or the pork or the, the pizza or the vegetarian or the, the burger. You could choose anything. And none of them are better than the others. You can't compare apples and oranges, as you know. None of them are better. They're all just different. And that's what you got to get. Your future is not better than the now. There's just different elements in it. But you're still going to be the same. There's just different elements. The, the, the person who's there that would prefer to have had food and then the person that's had food, whatever that food is, it's the same person. They just had a tension-seeking resolution that, that, that was inside of them. Yeah, so Tabitha's question. So the outcome for everything is ultimately how I want to feel every day, regardless of what's going on around me. Yeah, you simply, and I'm going to get into it now, is I want the business. Instead of saying I want this because it's going to change me, what we do is we do something different. Okay, we go into end results. Can everyone, just so I know that you guys are all engaged with this, type in the words end result. End result. End results. You need to understand end results. Okay. So step number one is you've got to get your end result, your ER. You've got to get into that, okay? So what is my end result? What is my end result? All right? And, and you, you think about that, okay? What am I creating? What is my end result? And now, now typically, inside of your end result, you're going to have um, uh, some choices, okay? And these are the ways that you choose to be, things that you choose to create, okay? Yeah, got you, Cam. And, and so you, you put these in, your end results, and then you, you step into those end results every single day, and then you live from the energy of your end results, the emotion of your end results. You live in the energy that those are there. And you make sure you're in them now without the specific things in your current reality. That's how it shifts. That's how it shifts. Okay, so step one is what are my end results? We, we ask for you to at least be choosing end results for fitness, finances, fulfillment, family, core four. Okay, I like you to have the one on those core four. I also like you to have three other choices to be the predominant creative force in your life, uh, health and vitality, and uh, to live your true nature and purpose. So you choose those, those are your end results. How would it feel to be living your true nature and purpose? How would it feel to be living free? How would it feel to uh, be the predominant creative force in life? How would it feel to have the body that you love? How would it feel to have the exact family that you love? How would it feel to have complete financial freedom? How would all of that feel? Does this make sense? I can't remember who asked the question now. <laughs> but you go into those and then you live in that energy. Does that make sense, Tabitha? I think it was Tabitha that asked. You live in that energy. Yeah. So step one is defining. Step two is, is getting into the energy. We do this every single day. We've got lots of meditations and things here for you live in it. And then you simply ask yourself, well, what is it like now? Because it needs to be the same. So someone's typed in, what if it's scary? What if it's scary? Guys, it is a new reality, and in no moment do I want to let you know this doesn't take courage. It takes courage 
to overcome. It takes courage to trust that you don't need to be scared of things in order to be motivated. Okay, it, it, it is, it's a new reality. And it takes a little while for you to orientate from a new place where you can have it all now. But trust me, it's, it's, it's less scary to find to have it now. It's less scary than to spend your life and the worst investment ever, the worst investment anyone can make is I'll sacrifice the most finite resource in, in human history, which is your time. I am going to sacrifice my time doing stuff I do not like, and it's going to be worth it in the future. Guys, this is this is the worst investment. I'm going to sacrifice the present moment and it's going to be worth it. Who agrees? You know, if you're if you want to make smart investments, that is the one investment that will never ever ever work out for you. I will not enjoy the now and it will be worth it. It will pay me back over here. That is terrible investment advice sacrifice the most finite thing you get time only moves one way time is a minute measurement of, of this lifetime it only moves one way and then it starts again i hear the most yeah yeah so that is scarier to me to ever invest my time in a way where I'm not, I'm not loving it. I'm not in the end result. Now that doesn't mean I don't have to, you know, I don't have to do my taxes or it doesn't mean that my dog doesn't crap on the floor and I have to clean up dog crap. You see, it doesn't mean that, right? And it doesn't mean that I'm simply going to be smiling and singing away as I do it. Okay. It's a working premise. It does, it's not some finite thing. Sure. My dog gets diarrhea and I have to wake up to that. You know, that's going to be a moment, <laughs> right? Like, I just want to make sure you get the humanness here too. You know, it, 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 this is a working premise because because I know people that want a complete finite model will say, but Chris, you know, what if you're thrown out of an airplane? You know, I, I don't know. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> you know, Well, I did. Well, I had a parachute. Yeah, well, awesome, Sylvia. Well, I'm glad you're here. One of my mentors um, calls it becoming a creative warrior. Got it. Can everyone type in that word creative warrior? I'm a creative warrior. Creative warrior. I'm going to overcome... I'm going to overcome the need to try to resolve my identity. I'm going to become a creative warrior. Creative warrior. Doesn't it feel good? I'm a creative warrior, you know? And the warrior part means overcoming your old self. Instead of, instead of going to try to fix or, or resolve your identity, overcoming it. And what I said before is that the, the worst investment one can make is to sacrifice the present moment under the in, 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 uh, premise that in the future it will be worth it. Yeah. Creative warrior, become a creative warrior, be a creative warrior where you overcome, you overcome the need and you overcome circumstances. You look right in the eyes of, you know, uh, a cheating spouse and you find a way to feel love and gratitude, you you overcome, you overcome being rejected, and you you find a way to stay in your end result. Can you do it every time? Probably not. You overcome heartbreak, bankruptcy, challenges. You you're able to over. Are you able to do it every time? Probably not. But that's your goal. That's the creative warrior. You're a creative warrior when you dictate how you feel in every moment. You're not powerless to your circumstances. You're not powerless to conditions and circumstances and other things. And powerless means, oh, I can't feel good because of this. 
you see. And the way I like to put it is sometimes, you know, you're you're in creative gym, right? You're, you're pushing up against some really big resistance, hey? And, and just like I had to, you know, my best friend was killed. I went from successful in finances to, to being sued and hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And it was that moment that I overcame that and chose to be grateful and happy and abundant with nothing. That was that was the strength. That was the the lesson. And that's what we all get, by the way. You know, if you guys are the ones that are here live or watching this anytime recently, we're in we're in a, an interesting time where we get to go. You know what? If I can overcome this moment now and be in my end result now, well, gee, once things go back to normal, life is life is going to be easy. So success isn't personal, it's structural. And we need to be in the right structure. The right structure is my now equals my future. And nothing can take me out of it because I'm the powerful creator of my reality.